सो हाई एवरी वन आई एम ईश्वर कुमार फाइनल इयर रेसिडेंट डी वे पाटिल हॉस्पिटल कोलहापुर एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टैंक आई आर आई ए फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रेजेंट एट ट्वेंटी एथ एम आर आई कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टैंक माई मेंटर्स डॉक्टर नितिन वाधवानी सर हु इज़ प्रोफेसर एंड एच ओ डी एंड महेश सर हु इज़ सीनियर रेसिडेंट फॉर ग्रेट टीचर्स एंड फॉर माई गाइड्स फॉर दिस पेपर मेकिंग सो माई टॉपिक इज फैकमाटोसिस and i will be presenting some typical uh, atypical common and not so common cases which presented to our department so phacomatosis sir neurocutaneous syndrome sir heterogeneous group of disorders and have variable inheritance pattern and as of now more than 30 entities are included so we'll be in, uh, discussing some of the uncommon associations and atypical findings of most common neurocutaneous syndromes through some cases and also we'll be discussing a rare case of incontinentia pigmentae so all these cases are done on three thirds slime mri machine in our department and the most common urocutaneous syndromes described in literature are tuberous sclerosis and f1 and nf2 so uh, if we consider nf1 the plexiform neurofibromas and bilateral optic nerve gliomas are almost pathognomonic for the diagnosis of nf1 and similarly bilateral acoustic schwannomas are pathognomonic for nf2 and are cortical tubers subependymal hematomas cutaneous angiofibromas and segas for uh, tuberous sclerosis and there are several rare phacomatoses with cns manifestations like incontinentia pigmentae which require exclusively clinical or histological diagnosis so to start with cases this is the first case a 20 year old female patient presented with long term back pain upper and lower limb pain so this is a typical but not so common case of nf1 with extensive subcutaneous and deep plexiform neurofibromas with symmetrical whole body involvement which is pathognomonic for nf1 so these are transverse images and here we are seeing lobulated t2 hyperintense lesion along the supraorbital nerve and inside the lesion we are seeing areas of hypointensity so these are plexiform neurofibromas along supraorbital nerve and also we are seeing diffusely involved uh, musculofacial planes at the level of skull base with neurofibromas this is the coronal image we are seeing plexiform neurofibromas along the brachial plexus and also in the subcutaneous plane of the neck and also plexiform neurofibromas involving the lumbosacral plexus and also in the abdominal wall and also the upper limbs and this is another case is a 11 year old boy with seizures vomiting headache blurring of vision clinically he had axillary cafe la spots so this is an uncommon diffusely infiltrative brain stem astrocytoma causing obstructive hydrocephalus and atypical bilateral staphylomas in a patient with axillary cafe la spots and neurofibromatous branches type 1 and in this image we are seeing uh, these are flare images we are seeing dilated ventricles with periventricular linear hyperintense signal what we call it as periventricular interstitial edema or csf seepage and here we are seeing hyperintense signal within the thalamus and the thalamus are swollen as well and the posterior uh, part of the cerebral aqueduct of the midbrain uh, we are seeing hyperintense signal on flare images and this is flare image at the level of pons posterior pons is involved and also the middle cerebellar peduncle uh, is involved bilaterally more on the left side and the cerebellar white matter is also involved the left inferior cerebellar peduncle is involved and also the vermis is involved and superior cerebellar peduncle and the cerebellum is showing uh, facilitated diffusion on adc map so similar Uh, uh restriction characteristics are seen even on the other lesions as well so here in this image this is t2 weighted image we are seeing a posterior bulging of the globe off center to the optic disc so this is staphyloma which are bilateral and this is an atypical association with only few reported cases with nf1 and the tactile plate which is biconvex and swollen which is causing obstruction uh, to the aqueduct with resultant obstructive hydrocephalus here we are seeing the enlarged lateral ventricle and also dilated third ventricle with normal fourth ventricle so this is an diffusely infiltrative brain stem astrocytoma which is an uncommon association of nf1 
This is another case, 27-year-old male patient presented with imbalance, slurred speech, progressive hearing loss, facial palsy, mouth deviation to the left side and giddiness. So this is a case of bilateral schwannomas with atypical enhancement and infiltrative characteristics in a young patient with NF2. So in this image, titubated image, uh, which is demonstrating predominantly heparin dense lesions in the bilateral CP angles at the level of MCP without distinct margins. So the lesion on the right side is more indistinct and the lesion of the uh, left side is little bit indistinct. We can make out the margins of this lesion better than the margins of this lesion. At a more higher level, again we are seeing mass effect uh, of this lesion which is on the left side, mass effect on pons. This is an ADC map which is showing uh, no restriction to the right sided lesion, equivocal peripheral areas of low ADC values to the uh, left sided lesion. Again uh, drive sequence at the level of pons. This right sided lesion is more infiltrative and the left sided lesion is more distinct and the margins are a little bit clear than the right sided lesion and also we can see the extension of this lesion into the IAC. Here we are seeing the hypointense extension into the IAC and also the extension into the IAC on the right side as well. And this lesion in the craniocaudal plane or the coronal plane is centered at the pontomedullary junction. So post contrast images on T1, pre contrast image, here we are seeing bilaterally uh, so to high point dense lesions on the left side, a little bit of hemorrhagic area. Uh, post contrast image on the right lesion, this is not showing enhancement with only a enhancing uh, foci in the center of the lesion and also uh, the IAC component is not showing any enhancement counter to that on the left side uh, the lesion is showing peripheral areas of enhancement and also the component of in the IAC is enhancing so this is an atypical case of NF2 so this is a 30 year old female patient presented with seizures so typical but uh, subtle case of tuberous sclerosis. Here we are seeing on flare images and titubated images, hyperintense triangular shaped signal in the cortex and the subcortical area of the right parietal lobe. And this is suggestive, this can be suggestive of a cortical tuber or it can be a focal cortical dysplasia. Unless we have an associated finding of tuberous sclerosis, we cannot for sure call this as cortical tuber because it is isolated. And and also in this case if we see carefully we are seeing these subamendimal hematomas and together now these two are diagnostic of tuberous sclerosis if we miss this subtle uh, subamendimal hematomas we cannot make the diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis in this case so this is another case two year old child presented with seizures and this is a typical and obvious case of tuberous sclerosis and this is situated coronal image, multiple cortical and subcortical areas of hyperintensity is cortical tubers and linear hyperintense radiating bands. Here we are seeing the radiating bands from periventricular to subcortical white matter and the transverse situated image showing the subependymal nodules and these nodules are hypointense on T2 which, which is owing to their calcifications and which is evident on ADC map as well. ADC is a GRE based map and hypo intensity uh, in the ADC can also be due to calcification other than restriction. So another case 50 year old patient presented with progressive headache on clinical examination patient had nasolabial angiofibromas. So this is in a typical case of tuberous sclerosis in a patient with adenoma sebaceum and an isolated brain finding of SEGA. So transverse image, coronal image, titubated images and we are seeing this heterogeneous intraventricular mass which is centered in the left lateral ventricle which is abutting the septum pellucidum pellu and also the ependyma. So this lesion is extending directly into the left foramen of Munro and compressing the outlet of right foramen of Munro which is resulting in obstructive hydrocephalus. And there is also this periventricular interstitial edema more on the frontal side. And in this coronal image, we are seeing the third ventricle which is collapsed and the dilated temporal horns of the lateral ventricle. 
जी आर ई में वी आर सींग दिस नॉर्मल एपेंडेमल वेन एंड द लीजन डज नॉट शो एनी ब्लूमिंग एंड ऑन टी वन वेटेड प्री कॉन्ट्रास्ट इमेज द लीजन इज आईसो टू हाई पॉइंटेंस विच डेमोस्ट्रेटेड इंटेंस ऑलमोस्ट होमोजीनस एनहेंसमेंट ऑन गैलिनियम एनहेंस पोस्ट कॉन्ट्रास्ट टी वन बेस्ड इमेज एंड मे बी लिटिल बिट ऑफ नॉन एनहेंसिंग एरियाज अदरवाइज इट इज होमोजीनसली एनहेंसिंग and as we know the clinical history so uh, the diagnosis of tuberal tuberous sclerosis is made uh, and this is a sega subependymal giant cell astrocytoma so if we don't know the clinical finding of uh, adenoma sebaceum uh, for this patient the diagnosis will would have been a central neurocytoma than a sega so this is another case this is a rare case of incontinentia pigmentae with vasculitis associated brain infarcts in a full term neonate so this is a 3 day old full term female baby presented with multiple erythematous pap papules and plaques on bilateral upper limbs lower limbs and axilla the baby weight was 3 kg at birth active and febrile she had an episode of generalized tonic clonic seizures and echocardiography was reported as normal So here we are seeing T2 weighted transverse image, heterogeneous signal in the bilateral corona radiata and posterior limb of the internal capsule, and also there are altered signal densities in the subcortical white matter as well. So this is an DWI image and ADC maps, and is, here we are seeing multiple foci of diffusion restriction, which are diffusely involving the bilateral cerebral hemispheres, which is more prominent on the right side, and these does not follow any vascular. territory and the corpus callosum is also involved the cerebellum is also involved and also there is complete involvement of the right thalamus and focal areas of involvement of the left thalamus and gre images areas of blooming involving bilateral cerebral hemispheres and also in the right cerebellar hemisphere and all these findings together find favor cns manifestation of vasculitis associated hemorrhagic infarct in a newborn with incontinentia pigmentae and concluding my paper so mri plays an important role leading the diagnosis or diagnosing this heterogeneous group of neurogenesis disorders especially with the advent of higher tesla mri magnets and newer sequences so if we see in the case of c3 although the side bilaterality and spread strongly suggested schwannomas infiltrative nature and atypical enhancement pattern raise diagnostic challenge in c4 differentiating a isolated cortical tuber from fcd would have been difficult if not for the subtle subependymal nodules and in c5 where there is an isolated brain finding of sega the diagnosis of central neurocytoma would have been favored if the patient had not been clinically examined for nasolabial angiofibromas in the case of c7 multiple random hemorrhagic infarcts in brain favored vasculitis as a cause of encephalitis in several previous studies the histologic and neuroradiologic observations have speculated that vascular etiology causes ischemia or an abnormal protein triggering and encephalitic process may be responsible for neurologic complications of incontinentia pigmentae and in c2 infiltrative astrocytoma bilateral cephaloma are uncommon associations of nf1 so the radiologist should be aware of clinical features atypical appearances and subtle findings to be able to make accurate diagnosis so these are my references and thank you very much for your patience